And now to our news hour shares. Storybook hours often seek to entertain young children while inspiring a love of reading. But one organization is turning the tables on who's turning the pages. The news hour's Julia Griffin explains. Too bad, said the stink bug. At the Adams Morgan Community Center in Washington, D.C. recently, parents and their tiny tots sat patiently, riveted by a storybook and its reader. He shuffled into Bear's room. Wake up, Bear, mumbled Mole. Spring is here. This is Drag Queen Story Hour. It's your classic children's reading program with a twist. The day's literary leader is a larger-than-life drag queen. Everybody wave to each other, make a friend next to you, okay? Author Michelle T. first created Drag Queen Story Hour in San Francisco in 2015. Its goal, to inspire a love of reading while teaching deeper lessons on diversity, self-love, and appreciation of others. Everyone is different and everyone is not bad, said Scooter, who is a turtle. Different is special. Today, readings take place at libraries, museums, and other cultural centers in more than 30 cities across the country. Some are small affairs, but many, like the one in Washington, D.C., play to full houses. I just love drag queens in general. It's a great opportunity to combine having a little one and enjoying like the performance of drag. I think it's important that we see different people. That mom and dad look different from other people, and lots of people love you and have stories for you, and we can learn from everybody. Jonna Purcell is a children's librarian with DC Public Library. It's just really been obvious that there was a need for this in our community. The library partnered with the DC chapter of Drag Queen Story Hour to bring the family-friendly events to the nation's capital. We talk a lot in children's literature about stories being both windows and mirrors. So Drag Queen Story Hour can be doing both. There may be a kid here who is seeing themselves reflected in a queen and seeing a possibility for what their lives could be. And then if not, there's a child that's seeing how someone else lives. Let's try this with nails. Ooh. One down. <laughs> Domingo, who goes by J.J. Vera when not in drag, has been performing drag at local D.C. bars and theaters for more than three years. She first learned about the organization after other drag queen story hours faced pushback from community groups objecting to LGBTQ themes being presented to children. New York City's drag queen story hour head, Rachel Amy. A lot of drag queen story hour chapters in other parts of the country have had serious backlash. Um, and people protesting their events and disrupting them, and it's sometimes, in some cases, even events have been canceled. The New York City chapter now runs the whole organization's website and social media channels and sets guidelines for how to run Drag Queen Story Hour events. We do provide support and guidance to chapters who are facing that backlash. In the Big Apple, Drag Queen Story Hours have become so popular that the chapter now offers events in Spanish and for children with autism and other special needs. The chapter also hosts drag queen fashion design and makeup workshops for older kids. The point, Amy said, is to create safe spaces for anyone interested in participating. LGBTQ kids often don't see themselves reflected in the broader culture, so it can be life-changing and even life-saving to have that kind of affirming programming in their libraries and schools. And for Domingo, whether the kids understood what a drag queen is wasn't the point. Instead, she was glad everyone seemed to enjoy the show. Drag queens are just here to entertain. We can read. We're intelligent. Like we, um, we are harmless. And I just hope that you know, moving forward, it kind of just like stretches those imaginations a little bit more to continue normalizing it, and you know, give people a little bit more like fearlessness to take home with them. Fearlessness with a dash of fun. Goodbye for now. Until we meet again. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Julia Griffin in Washington, D.C.